Welcome back, friends. I'm David from He Said, She Shed, and yes, you're in the right place. If you've been following our channel, you've noticed that the first several episodes have been something of a documentary of our outbuilding project, and a lot of that's been building out the workspaces inside of that outbuilding. Now, despite the fact that today's episode is starting here in my office, it's still related to that outbuilding project, and I wanted to take you through extending our internet service to that detached structure. We're gonna talk a little bit about wired versus wireless, what we chose and why, and then we'll get into the specific gear that went in to making it all happen. And it was actually easier than I thought it was gonna be. Stick around. So let's get right into it. You've got internet coming to your house and then you have this detached outbuilding and you want to extend the internet service to it. How do you do that? Does it go wired? Does it go wireless? How do you, what's the right way to go? Well, for us, I looked at going wired when we had a trench open when I was extending AC power from the breaker panel in our house out to the barn. But it turns out it's actually kind of a no-no to run data lines right alongside power lines because AC power puts out interference that doesn't play nice with data lines. If you've ever even run like a speaker cable right alongside a power cable, you notice your speakers pick up some hum. Well, in a simplistic sort of a way, it's the same kind of problem that rears its head when we're talking about running data lines right alongside of a power cable as well. So if you run the data line and the power line perpendicular to each other, that resolves the problem, but eh, that doesn't work when you've got a trench running between two points and you're just trying to bury some cable. The other way to go about it is to separate the power line from the data line by like 24 inches. Well, electrical code required that the cable for the power be buried by 24 inches so that means if I wanted to separate the data line by another 24 inches, oh, we'd have had to dig a four foot deep trench. Wasn't too crazy about doing that. Now with a wired connection, you do get better speed. So would it have been worth it to us? Actually not because we're not really needing to do anything heavy duty and really demanding in terms of internet bandwidth out in the outbuilding. The requirements are pretty minimal, so Rather than go through all of that jazz to dig such a deep trench or dig some whole other separate trench that took a separate path from the house to the barn, I decided to go ahead and look into wireless options. So when it comes to Wi-Fi coverage within the confines of your home, you've probably got a device that looks a little bit like this one somewhere in your house. And well, there's one cable that comes out of the back of there that effectively connects to the outside world to your internet provider. And there's a couple of other jacks back there that you might have something plugged in, one of your own devices that needs internet connectivity. And in most cases, these little black boxes or, or gray boxes or whatever color they are, also function as a Wi-Fi access point. But that Wi-Fi coverage is usually pretty limited. Works great for inside the house and well, you might be able to open your front door and stand out on the front porch and still get a few bars, but you walk five, six, 10 paces away from the house and pretty much you're done. There's nothing. So expecting a device like this to be able to push Wi-Fi to an outbuilding that's like 100 feet away, mm -mm, not gonna cut it. So you need something else. So it turns out there's a bunch of different offerings out there in the marketplace that make a directional Wi-Fi antenna of some kind. And basically it's a separate little network appliance that needs to plug into one of those jacks in your main router that connects you to the outside world. Now, you essentially need two of those, one at the main building and one at the detached structure. So with that in mind, that's kind of why I started today's video in the main building in our house. Now, if you're wanting to know specific make and model information of the directional Wi-Fi antenna gadgets that I ended up buying, I'll definitely get into that level of detail here in a minute. But for the moment, I'm just gonna show you what we've got at the house end. And it's just sitting here on my windowsill. So that's it, that's what it looks like. And it's very cleverly strapped to this glass jar with sand art 
using a Velcro strap. So there are, I'm not sure if you can see, there's uh, some LEDs on the back of it that are kind of a, a signal strength indicator. And then there's a cable coming out of it that the other end of that cable effectively plugs into my home router into one of those jacks in the back. And that's really all it takes in terms of gazintas and gazautas as far as the cabling goes. Now, as I mentioned, you need two of these. So there's a second one just like this mounted to the barn aimed toward the house, just as this one is at the house aimed toward the barn. So let's take a quick walk outside. We'll show you where that one's mounted, followed by just a quick look under the hood for the other gear that's beyond that in the barn that makes this all work. So just to give you a sense of proximity for where things are in relation to each other, there's the little Wi-Fi antenna sitting on my windowsill that we were just looking at. And then its brother is mounted under the corner of the eaves of the barn right there in the upper right. And here we are inside the barn. This is where we wanted to be able to extend that internet signal to. And once I got in here though and started looking at things from the floor, I realized there kind of isn't much to see. So you'll have to use your imaginations just a little bit. But I want to take you through the, sort of the spatial orientation of what's where anyway. So the corner of the building that we were just looking at is right out here. That's where that other Wi-Fi antenna sits. The cable pokes inside and then the ethernet cable is just stapled to the underside of this piece of wood that's part of the structure. And it actually runs the full length of the barn. So in a moment, I'll go ahead and take you over there where the other end of that cable terminates and the equipment that's there and talk about what that is and why it is. But before we do that, I wanted to throw in one other quick thing about the whole wired versus wireless considerations. Now there is a distance limitation with ethernet cable for data transmission and that's a, that, that's a limitation of 300 feet before you need to add some other special piece of hardware like a repeater to be able to up the signal strength to be able to push it further down uh, a greater distance yet. Now the thing is for our situation, we're actually inside of that 300 foot margin. So that actually could have worked here in that sense. But again, the idea of having to dig a deep trench or maybe a whole second trench <laughs> to be able to just run one lonely little ethernet cable just seemed like a bridge too far, just a, a lot of extra trouble and expense. So yeah, so as you can tell, I've uh, foregone the wired route and opted for a wireless solution, which is working out well for us. Okay, let's go up into the loft and I'll show you this last bit of gear and then we'll go from there and wrap this up. We're almost done. So here in the loft, amid where the camping and sporting goods equipment are, are stored, the uh, Christmas decorations are kept, the home repair supplies and items are kept. We're storing some things for our kids up here as well. Uh, also up here is the last of the network hardware that gives us internet functionality out here in the barn. So we'll take you through that just really briefly. So the cable that is stapled all the way out to that antenna that's mounted on the outside of the building, that's this orange cable right here that runs down and then runs the full length of the barn. So that cable comes into this little black box. Now, as you might guess, where that antenna is mounted on the inside, there isn't exactly an outlet nearby, but I do have some power back here. So that's one of the reasons that this is where this gear landed is there's an outlet up here. So some really smart person invented something called power over ethernet. And that's what this little black box does that I'm holding. And you might see that the other end of it's plugged into a power strip. So not only does this little black box pass the data signal through, but it also sends power back to that little gadget that's mounted on the outside of the building. So slick. So that speaks for the orange cable, speaks for the little black box, and then the data passing through then gets handed off to the yellow cable, which is just plugged into a Wi-Fi access point. And as you might guess, when you fire up your phone and you're looking for nearby Wi-Fi networks, what's this one called? He said, she said. What else, right? All right, so let's get down to the million dollar question on everyone's mind. What is the specific hardware that we use for those 
antennas that connect the two buildings together. All right, so the company that makes it is Ubiquiti. They spell it all funky, U-B-I-Q-U-I-T-I. -I -I. And then the model name is the Loco M5. There's fancier ones, there's bigger ones, there's ones that have like a longer range that they're capable of. They make all different types of network hardware. It's not just about wireless stuff linking two buildings together. They have a full line of network hardware. I just chose these because they just seemed most appropriate to the task and pretty much of everything that they make, they were about the cheapest. So I think each unit was around 50 bucks. So yeah, $100 to link the two buildings together. Now this particular Wi-Fi access point was something that I had laying around from a previous project. So this wasn't of any extra expense uh, in, in my situation. So just one more topic to wrap this up. Let's go ahead and head back to my office. I'd like to show you a few things about the setup of these Wi-Fi transceivers that we use to link the two buildings together from a software perspective. We'll take a look at that real quick and call it a day. So just a quick look at the software. Uh, once you plug one of these Ubiquiti nanostation devices into your local network, and then uh, by way of your web browser, just go to its little administration page. It looks like this. So we're not actually logged into one of my nanostations. We're actually looking at another YouTube video from a channel called Crosstalk Solutions. This guy does really, really, really excellent plain language uh, tutorials on all kinds of networking stuff. I think he does more than just Ubiquiti branded uh, gear. I think he does things from kind of across the spectrum, but I'm not super sure. Anyway, if you want a plain language tutorial for all kinds of networking stuff, I mean, it's plug this in first, type in this, check this checkbox, open that screen, like step by step, just, he doesn't talk over my head, so if I can do this, you can do this. Um, but uh, this tutorial that we're looking at right here was just super helpful in getting my uh, wireless bridge between these two structures set up. So I'll put a link to his video down in the description box. Uh, super helpful stuff. Now, my video here today wasn't intended to be some sort of a deep dive step-by-step -step tutorial, but again, his stuff is. But I am going to geek out with you for just a minute on about this one screen. Once you get the basics of this thing plugged in and set up and the right checkboxes checked and blanks filled in, you get this little signal strength meter, which is just like a pretty real-time sort of thing about how strong is the connection between the two structures, between those two little Wi-Fi antennas. And what's neat about that is it sort of helps you like aim the antenna and get them pointed directly at each other. They're pretty directional, but they're pretty forgiving as well. Uh, but having that real-time update of like green, yellow, red, it's crappy, it's eh, doing better, it's okay, now you're in the green zone. So super helpful, super, e super easy to work with. And this, this, this is one of my favorite little features of this, of this whole user interface thing here. So that about wraps it up, guys. I know today's video was a pretty big departure from the kinds of projects you've been seeing us do thus far here on He Said, She Said. But from the very beginning, from our little intro video, which if you haven't watched that yet, that's seven minutes out of your life that are worth spending. If you stick around to the end, there's some fun outtakes. But anyway, our intent as we set out from the very beginning was just to bring you guys along for whatever the project du jour turned out to be. Now, to date, that's been anything from gardening and landscaping sorts of outside things, but then, of course, the build out of our uh, outbuilding and the workspaces within the wood shop and the art studio, we've been pretty fixated on that sort of thing. So, yeah, today's uh, topic of networking and technology and so forth, yeah, pretty big departure, but it all ties in. Let me know, though, in the comments, is this sort of subject matter just too much diversity and like, wow, we have whiplash? Or if you're liking the diversity, if you're liking the, hey, whatever the project du jour is around the he said, she said universe, yeah, bring us in on it, keep the diversity coming, um, affirming or otherwise, Drop us a comment and let us know what you're thinking and what you want to see more of or less of. We want to hear from you. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. We enjoy having you. We enjoy hanging out with you. Take care, everyone, and take care of each other until we see you next time.